and welcome to another live demonstration. Today I want to celebrate the Inktober. Um, Jake Parker, it's his initiative and what it does is to, um, it's a challenge that you draw, do an ink drawing, post it on social media every day in October, so that's 31. To be honest I haven't done it um, for 31 days but I think it's a really good challenge and a really good incentive just to pick up a pen and to have a go. So it doesn't matter you've not done 31 days, have a go at even once or once a week. Um, and if you didn't do it this year, there's always next year. So to celebrate this, I'm going to do um, a pen drawing. And I'm going to use one of my favourite pens, which is actually a calligraphy pen. So the elegant writer. It's a chisel end, it's a calligraphy pen. That's what it is designed for. But it has a really interesting feature. It's water soluble. And when you wet the ink, it splits into um, different colours, which I'll show you later in the demonstration. So I, was, I knew I wanted to do it, knew I wanted to celebrate the Inktober. I was trying to think of the subject. And it's sometimes you just have a real block and you just don't know what to do. And this subject I've chosen has actually been staring me in my face all my life. I live in Newark. There is a beautiful 12th century um, castle wall or remains of a castle on a beautiful river. And I drive past it, I've walked past it, I've seen it all my life. So this is a perfect subject to do. And it's funny how things that, you know, you've lived there and you kind of, you know it's beautiful, but you just never think of incorporating it into your painting. So this is what I'm doing. So I stood there very early in the morning to take pictures because I didn't want cars going past and was taking pictures. And I also had to go through my school notes just to learn a bit of history of the castle as well. So I will talk about that as I do it. So like I say, the elegant writer, calligraphy pen. Keeping it simple pen, water brush with water in and a sketchbook and off you go and I'll show you how beautiful this pen works. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch and I'm going to vary my line. The beautiful thing about a castle that's a little ruined is that you don't need to be overly careful about um, all the straight lines. Straight lines which are evident like the tower here which one of the best um, preserved and some of the down and horizontal lines you know make sure you keep them as um, clean as you can but other lines you can be a little bit wavy with because it it is a um, broken down castle it's one of the best preserved of its age and actually some of the stones from the castle you still see around the town in walls, in buildings, when it was sacked. So 12th century castle originally, made from timber um, by the Bishop of Lincoln, Alexander. And it was made in this position because it's a really strategic position. Newark is a very strategic position because it's on two Roman roads. You've got the A1 going north and you've got the foss going east and west so it's got quite a um, good position which is why it's always had a long history so the castle has had a long history with war because of its position so it's been sieged a number of times um, originally timber and then rebuilt the same century in the 12th century by stone so it obviously um, the position of it was well known then. So river runs here, the River Trent. Um, it's a lovely, it's a, it's a lovely river. You, you get all the swans on it and it looks lovely in the summer. And you've got a pub here, which is the barge um, from on an arge, a barge boat. What I'm trying to do is put the key features in and you'll see I'm not doing a solid line because it doesn't need it. I want to show 
it's solid, but I also want to show it's a bit um, broken down. I'm just trying to see, make sure I've got key features like windows because that makes a difference and people who recognise the castle will know there's the oriel window here. That's one of the most decorative. So it's still seen. So it was sacked and dismantled in the 16th century after being a key point in the Civil War. The gatehouse, we call in Newark King John's gatehouse because King John was supposed to have died of dysentery in this gatehouse. So this is the gatehouse here. If you're looking at it from here, you get a really good view of it. But from the position I was standing on the bridge over the River Trent when I took this um, picture. So it's funny how things are there. So if you have, oh, I don't know what to paint, I'm struggling. Just look around you, just go for a walk. You know, you probably will find that there are, you know, things to inspire you in the town or go to a library and, and see what um, books are, are there, what other artists have done. I'm actually being very careful with the amount of ink I put on because I practiced this once and I forgot how much ink, how, how much it spreads with water. So, um, yeah, square window at the top. Um, window here. So I'm just being very careful not to, and you'll see I'm not doing every little detail. I'm not going to do every little brick. I might put some bricks in um, just to show the direction and just give it some form. But it's a sketch and I, I like that sketchy feel. I'm not always one to do a really completely finished piece of work. I, I like to see what you've been, all the build up, you know, so the lines, a bit of pencil drawing, the marks that you've made, you know, what your thinking process behind it. Um, square at the top. And you can see, I don't have to put all the lines in, I don't have to do it exactly. It's, it's given you an indication of an, a good idea and a good representation of the castle. So this window, you can see right through it. So I've left a gap there. And then it, the, I don't know what this bit, I can't remember what this bit is, but it's, it sticks out. And then the lovely window here. I have had a tour of the castle, I think, when I was a child. I just can't really remember. And then it, in the Victorian times, um, the gardens were landscaped. And there's a bandstand which has um, bands on through the summer. And I have been to um, film nights where they project onto a screen, onto the castle, and you can watch a film, which is, a, you know, you just take your chair and you sit there looking at the beautiful surroundings and you watch a film. I think the last one I watched was Memphis Bell, which was a few years ago. So all of this is memories just from looking and remembering the castle and walking around it and, you know, getting images. All of this is flooding back to me, all this um, memories, and how much it's actually been part of, you know, my life, my growing up. So, like I say, it is really funny what's actually staring you in the face. So you actually can still see crenellations along this wall here. Um, there are places of, that have been restored, but on the whole, it's as it was when it was sacked. And I, I, my, I like to walk around the town and to try and see old stone in the walls, in the buildings from the castle. I know when I go to the dentist, I walk past the wall and there's definitely old castle stone in the building there. Okay, so you can see how that's 
building up. So the trees are really going to be quite easy. Again, I don't want to put too much mark on, but <coughs> using the chisel and the fine areas, I'm just going to squiggle them, just sketch them, bring them up roughly. Again, I'm probably going to jump around because I love this bit here and I love changing the direction and that's overhanging. Um, I'm not sure if it's moss or it's an overhanging plant, but they overhang into the water. So what I'm doing is making sure I have nice solid lines alongside much more sketchy lines. So the wall here, you can see the top of it. And you can see that I'm not overly worried about, there's a bush here, you know, really precise. I've not used a ruler. That's one way of doing it. But for me, this is a sketch. This is using the materials, making them work for you. Yeah. And you'll see why I don't want to put too much um, ink on when I put the pen on. I want different tones in here and I can achieve that again. But you can see these are obviously plants compared to the solid, much more linear structure of the building. Um, might put a few lines, but I've tried this before and it ended up being a little too much. I had too much ink on the page. This is darker. Again, just using that edge and it's giving me a lovely sharp line. I'm thinking to myself all the time, don't overdo it, stop, don't push what you're seeing and don't, um, House. don't try because I do know when I put water on how much this is going to move I want the ink at the bottom and you'll see why so a much stronger line here let's get on with some treat this is was quite must have taken this well I took it only the other day actually so it is autumn this obviously is a tree that's already started to lose its leaves where of these are starting to colour but haven't lost but some of them may be evergreen anyway and there's some colour in the background okay let's just fill up here and i work very quickly i could take my time and draw a little bit more precisely this is the way I draw. Okay, I think that's probably it. We don't need much more because the next stage will suddenly bring it to life. And to be honest, once that's dried, I can always add to it. So I think that's a great time for a break. So join us in a minute and we will put some water on and you'll just see the colour burst into life. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage, and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles, and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalog with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration from the magazines. It's to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. 
it seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Hello and welcome back. So now this is, for me, the fun part. I'm going to put water. So you've done the ink drawing and I can leave it to that. I could add to it. I can build up. I can make it much more um, detailed if I wanted to. But I know what this ink does. I'm doing it on a watercolour paper. Um, it works more effectively depending on the paper. I have used it on cartridge paper and it works, but not quite as much as it does on a watercolour paper because watercolour paper is designed to allow um, pigment to flow across the surface as well as that little bit of absorption. So less talking, more doing. So let me think, where am I going to start? Start here. And I'm just pulling. What you won't actually see at the moment is the lovely colour splitting properties. You may need to wait for that. You can see how just pulling the ink across has created that blue, but what it also does, it splits into pinks. So what I'm trying now to do is not pick up any more colour. So I'm creating a solid can see some pinks coming up here and I'm hoping that by the end it will all have moved too much water but I want a lot of what oh, it's here now it's just starting to split into that beautiful blues and pinks I'm going to think I'm still thinking a little bit about shadow so this side I'm going to keep it catching the light so not as dark and you can see how quickly and easy for me. I'm just putting it on. This side, if I catch the darks, I just need to pull it from the edge. And just make sure I show that there's white stone around the windows. Again, leaving bits out. Here I think I can pull. I'm liking that. This is much... So practice is important. This is my second attempt at this because I needed just to make sure that everything I was going to tell you would work. Um, and my first attempt, to be honest, it, I liked it, but it was different. It was very different. I'd put a lot more ink on the page and I felt it, it was overdone. Once I put the water on, the ink flowed much more than I remembered. Um, so this time I've really put a lot less on and I'm loving the very soft effects it's making. Um, drop that in. Let's see if I can pull out some inks just to darken and create a little bit more darker areas. Go. Because it's a solid structure, I do want to show a little bit of light and dark so the dark is at the bottom. It's solid, it's not... Um, fluffy like the trees, you know, you can get away with that a little bit. I think, especially with a building, you do need to have a... L it's a mix of control and a mix of, you know, a little bit of... So I, f I really like that. I think that's worked really well. So now, I'm just going to get flood this area here with water and pull it in because this is where the river is, the River Trent. And that may not look... Um, very colourful at the moment, but I do know it's going to kick in. So now for the wall. Bushes. Down the wall. Like I say, I think possibly I might have been a little cautious, but it's definitely working better than it did on my first. So if you notice how I changed direction, the river is coming across here. Really, I could make sure I've put um, 
some shadows back in here if I was doing it, you know, to be much more realistic. Um, and I can do that once it's dry. I can put more ink on and I can put more water on. See, look how dark that is because I'd put quite a lot of ink on there. But again, I'm thinking about tones and values. And I can take some of this colour, move it here. So here, trees, just again use. I'm just, I know in the picture I've got, it's very flat, very dark. There was no sunshine. The next day the sun came out, I thought, oh, I could have took it then. But there's no sunshine. This is where you have to think about what you're painting. Is this looking like there's light on it? Because I think light is really important. Um, and it takes a dull, the photograph I've got is dull in that there's no light, there's no light source, it's just grey. It was a grey day, to be fair. Um, but I'm suggesting that there's actually light. The light's hitting, so now this is grass in front and I don't want to, but it does need something. It's better, definitely work better. So let's see. I like that. Um, what I want to do is I want to just add a little bit of oomph. So creating a sky. I'm going to pull out some of this. Just look at that, look how that just pushes up into the, just touching the top of the edge of the castle. It's just pushing it in. We have a quick question for you. Richard. Yes. Um, is it possible to add a little bit of ink to the nib of the water pen for adding the shadows? I was thinking about that, um, but what I don't want to do is add water to the pen because it will start to dry it up. I, what I will do is I will put it onto a piece of paper and I'll pick it up from there. Um, I'm not adding water to the pen. The pen isn't designed to have water added to it. Water? Oh, right, yeah. So, no. Yeah. yeah. No, so I think the question was more adding ink to the water pen. Oh, putting, yeah, yeah. These water pens are brilliant. You can put pigment in, you can put ink in, you can put anything you want in. Um, I put quink ink or a fountain pen and again that has splitting properties but yeah you can it's a water pen but there's nothing stopping you filling it with anything that's thin enough this it has to be as thin as water um, to be able to get through the um, mechanism here um, but yeah you can fill them with ink um, but it may just make so it's thin enough if it's thick like an acrylic ink it possibly won't work there are pens that work for that but yeah fill it Water. I've put watercolour in, you know, and mix it up, and then you've got a pen with water in. So I'm just going to do the sky, let it run into possibly that. I should have kept it more solid, but I like this. I like the way, look at that beautiful pink halo it's creating. So sorry, I misunderstood, but yes, you can put ink in the. What I'm going to do, like I said, is I don't want to add this while it's wet. I'm just going to I've put some ink on the um, paper and I'm just going to now add some shadows which I feel I've lost because this is water it needs a little bit more. The wall needs a little bit more structure. So I'm constantly thinking about light and dark. Not always shape especially when you, you're as loose as this but definitely light and dark. So actually you can see the different colour it's making by adding this on and it's working pretty effectively. So go. And I can possibly use dry brush as well and get those lovely marks. Right, so let's see if I can add a little bit more drama into the sky. And what's bothering me is a little bit more tonal value here. And then I'm going to stop. I, I feel it's all very one at the moment, which is easily solved. I'm thinking this side has got to be 
be dark as well because it's gone in. It's recessed back and let's darken this side here. Maybe here. Mind you Sorry. That's okay. And let's so I think that just adding a little bit more dark tones has improved it. It's pushed this tower forward. It's kind of pushed things back. I'm going to leave it at that because I will just keep fiddling and moving on. And actually, as the ink develops, it's going to create its own character anyway. So I hope you enjoyed that. So celebrating Inktober, I know I'm a little late, but any bit of drawing, any bit of sketching, anything you do is, is always good practice. So join me next Tuesday for Halloween, where I'll be doing something a little bit spooky.